The new Intel Core Ultra Desktop Processor Series 2 are finally here and today we'll be taking a look at the results that we have gathered from three new processors within this new series. Yes, you heard me right, three of them. Apart from the Core Ultra 9285K and the Core Ultra 5245KF, we managed to get our hands on the Core Ultra 7265KF from a friend of ours just for today. Built on Intel's latest 15th generation Arrow Lake architecture, these processors utilize the new LGA1851 socket that are designed to work with Intel's 800 series chipset motherboards. Yes, this also means that you will need a new motherboard for this new series of processors. One of the notable changes in this generation is that Intel has decided to ditch hyperthreading. They claim that this decision was made after some serious consideration and partly because people in the PC gaming community complained about hyperthreading hurts the gaming performance. Hmm, I thought they did this before with the 9th generation. The new Intel Core Ultra Desktop Processors Series 2, yes, that is the full official name for this generation of processors, they emphasize on power efficiency while maintaining high performance for both computing and gaming. On the other hand, all the processors have an NPU now, even though most of the gamers won't really require it at the moment. Intel did highlight that some tasks can be offloaded to the NPU, but we'll not talk about it in this video. Alright, we're comparing the Series 2 with the 14th Gen Intel Core i9 and also AMD's latest Ryzen 9 9950X. We are also using the default Intel profile in the BIOS settings for this test, as I believe that is the settings most people will be using out of the box. Now let's talk about the synthetic benchmarks first. 7-zip file compression and decompression is interesting here. Although the Ryzen 9 7950X and 9950X take the lead in decompression performance thanks to the extra cores and threads it has, the Core Ultra 9285K has managed to take the lead in compression despite having less core counts and the absence of hyperthreading. For benchmarks like Cinebench R32 and Geekbench 3, the Core Ultra 9285K is the winner here in most of the tests, showing its prowess against its AMD rivals. What's even more surprising is that the Intel Core Ultra 7265KF and the Core Ultra 5245KF has great single core performance, which is almost on par if not better than the Core i9-14900K. For creative app benchmarks, we have two different segments here. The first segment is where the benchmarks don't require all the cores usage, and that is where the Core Ultra 9285K will perform better than the Core i9-14900K, and sometimes even on par with the Ryzen 9 9950X. On the other segment of apps that devours all of the cores that it can get, the Core i9-14900K and the Ryzen 9 9950X will have the advantage purely from having more cores and more threads. For 3D Mark, the Ryzen 9 7950X and 9950X are still better performing CPUs in both Firestrike and TimeSpy, followed by the Intel Core Ultra 9-285KF and the Core Ultra 7-265KF which are on par or better than the Core i9-14900K. The Core Ultra 5-245KF isn't falling too far behind either, which is surprising to us. Now, enough about the synthetic benchmarks. Now, let's talk about the games. The results somehow match the patterns we've seen from Intel's benchmarks, where the Intel Core Ultra 9-285K is slightly better than the Core i9-14900K. In our test, the Core Ultra 9285K takes the lead in titles like Far Cry 6, Dirt 5, Horizon Zero Dawn, but falls slightly behind on Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Cyberpunk 2077. The Core Ultra 7265KF shares similar patterns as the Core Ultra 9285K, while the Core Ultra 5245KF can still be seen performing close to the Core i9 14900K on some titles, even though it falls short for a majority of the time. That is to be expected since the Core Ultra 5 series is aimed towards the more mid-range users. With Arrow Lake being such a huge leap from the previous generation, what is the power draw and the temperature? 
Intel puts heavy emphasis on efficiency and here are the highest power draws that we have recorded. But wait, there's more. The highest end Intel processors had always nearly reached triple digit temperatures. Now we have the new Cooler Master, Master Liquid 360 Ion Air O Cooler and this is the latest Air O Cooler in our arsenal. The Core i9-4900K can still reach 96 degrees Celsius with this cooler, but the Intel Core Ultra 9285K reaches about 90 degrees Celsius, but the Intel Core Ultra 7265K and the Core Ultra 5 245K, the highest load temperature recorded during heavy load is at 74 and 80 degrees Celsius respectively, but it will run slightly cooler for most of the time. This is a huge improvement in terms of efficiency. With a new architecture means a lot of things have changed. So how's the memory overclocking support? Well, for the most part, it has improved. We tested the all new CPUs with our existing and newer DDR5 memory kits and DDR5 8000 plus is easily achievable for most of the time. The highest that we were able to get this time is DDR5 8600 mega transfers per second using the Core Ultra 9 285K paired with the ROG Maximus Z890 Apex motherboard, which is this one. Of course, the performance can vary depending on the motherboard, CPU, and memory kit that you are using. Older kits with lower frequencies might not guarantee you to run it at DDR5 8000 all the time, but the new CU DIMMs might be an option if you are able to get your hand on those. So at the end of the day, the new Intel Core Ultra Desktop Processors Series 2 shows great power efficiency, great temperatures, and also great performance. The Core Ultra 9285K is a great improvement over its predecessor, especially with its temperature and also power efficiency. If you are already using the Core i9, 3900K or 4900K and don't care about the efficiency, then this wouldn't matter much. If you are on a platform that is older than that, maybe the 12900K or older, then this is an excellent upgrade. The Core Ultra 7 265KF, it's a great option for those who has lower budget but still want something powerful for both work and games. Once again, it's a reasonable upgrade if you are coming from the 12th gen or older. For most users out there, I would say the Intel Core Ultra 5 245KF is the best chip that balances both price and performance. I mean, it's no stranger for us, especially how their processors have been dominating the user recommendation list. And that's all that we have for you here today about the Intel Core Ultra Desktop Processors Series 2. What do you think about these new processors? Do you agree with our take and do you have your own take on this? Do let us know down in the comment section below and as always, I'll see you guys in the future videos. Yeah.